Hello there, thank you for joining me again today. Uh, today we're looking at the Anritsu series of RF sensors. Uh, this being the MA24106A. Uh, this is a USB uh, power sensor, um, which <coughs> is capable of measuring uh, powers between 50 megahertz and 6 gigahertz. And um, it has quite a useful uh, feature. Um, being able to measure such a wide frequency range it has a dynamic range of minus 10 dBm to plus 25 dBm so that's the uh, the level there, it says warning it says um, damage level, I think it's plus 33 dBm maximum or 25 volts DC bias and uh, talks about torque levels there and whatever you know so not to over tighten it um, it has an N type plug on the end, type N. Seems quite well made, it's metal box, metal enclosure, it's not plastic with a USB cable on the on the end there. And uh, it's, it's very similar in, in a way to the um, architecture of, you know, such as the Marconi uh, power sensors that's used on the, uh, you know, microwave radio test sets uh, where we've got uh, power sensor again that's a, a similar sort of thought to it and uh, this uses this particular one only connects to you know the scalar network vector network analyzer there uh, which is what we're displaying on that monitor but um, thing with these is these are very very accurate very stable um, and extremely accurate and, and this particular one goes up to 46 gigahertz and it actually has a K type adapter uh, not an SMA um, so you know it's obviously using air electric um, at that frequency up to 46 gigahertz so it's extremely I think but again the similar type of idea that Anritsu are using there uh, with regard to you know how they will uh, measure RF power at low levels etc now, I'm doing more videos on the Anritsu Sightmaster shortly, so keep your eyes out for that. And one of the accessories that comes with one of the Sightmasters that I've got for measuring antenna VSWR, for example, and um, uh, measuring the performance of uh, coaxial cables, uh, antennas, and it also does RF levels as well, um, similar to what this does. Um, and it has a sensor very similar to this made by Anritsu, which connects into the uh, Sightmaster unit, uh, the display unit, um, and then obviously that can be used as well um, to measure duplexer filters, characteristics of bandpass filters, and um, antenna performance, reflection analysis, um, and also measure RF levels at low level like this can. Um, so this is like a uh, a low powered version of an RF sensor. Obviously you can use um, you know attenuators externally to measure higher powers that's not a problem uh, but this works from software which is what we've got running at the moment um, this is what we've downloaded from Anritsu um, this piece of software is called the Anritsu Power Expert software and that's the nice thing about Anritsu they do support even older products as well I've found on their website unlike other manufacturers they get rid of the um, the actual software or the manuals and things off the website and don't want to refer to old kit and Ritsu do tend to uh, have quite a good support regime when it comes to uh, documentation software software drivers firmware things like that they do support things I mean this isn't old by any stretch of the imagination it's still a current product um, but my point is, is that at least it's an open source community with Anritsu where they will provide software um, you know, um, for those who own such instruments to download without any aggro. So this is the software package here that we've downloaded and uh, what we've got, we've got uh, quite a bit um, going off here. Uh, we can select different units as well of power measurement. There's all kinds of different uh, 
settings that we can go into in the continuous mode which is what we're running at the moment so you've got a time slot mode a slope mode or a scope mode sorry um, we've got different modes across the top there that you can you can catch I've got it in continuous mode at the moment and uh, and likewise as well we've got general settings uh, trigger settings then we've got a graph which appears showing us the power versus time uh, which as you can see is moving along nicely you can set up as well uh, your power ranges down here uh, your min and max so you can adjust the scale accordingly as well which is quite useful because um, what's nice about this is if you want to measure noise on a signal you can put these limits quite close say 0.5 of a db difference between the min and maximum levels and then it'll display the noise, the phase noise that's coming out of a signal generator. Um, so that can be quite a useful measurement as well. Um, so that's something else to bear in mind. Uh, then we have the DBM levels. Uh, we can zero the sensor as well. And, um, and we'll do some measurements with it just to show you what it's like. But fairly simple to set up. I've got an old laptop here that I'm using. Nothing special and um, we've just got this standard USB cable that plugs in the back, nothing else, it gets its power from the USB connects straight into the USB port all the drivers and everything are all installed to recognise it when it's plugged into that particular port and the COM port's set up so that's, uh, that's it, so we just need to zero the sensor now uh, which is what we'll do and uh, we, can, we can do that by clicking on the on the zero bit. Now, the uh, the GUI, the graphical user interface, is um, is actually quite intuitive. I found it quite easy to use. Um, it's a little bit like the Bird Watt Meter um, software that I'll be showing you on the Bird 5000 EX um, detector and RF power meter. So it's zeroed the sensor now. Now, uh, what we'll do is we'll connect it up to. Uh, today we'll use the IFR twenty nine sixty eight radio test set um, to be using signal generator uh, for this measurement. I've set the RF output level on the uh, IFR um, twenty nine sixty eight to uh, minus ten dBm at one hundred and fifty megahertz. So if we uh, if we get the the sensor now and and connect it up, let's see if we can do it without one handed. See, I've got the camera in one hand, so we'll just connect the damn thing up and see what happens. And uh, right, so we're we're connected in now on the RF input. We've got the minus ten dBm level at 150 megahertz so and now we can start to see the the level here in dbm and obviously with the scale that we've got i've chosen a scale of uh, zero dbm um, maximum power and a minimum power minus 20 so it gives us a 20 db range um, obviously we can home in on this uh, level uh, even more expand it out so that if there's any noise on that signal then we can uh, pick that out as well so that's quite a useful thing to do um, so yes we've got we've got power versus time if I now uh, decrease that um, level on here um, so if I just do me uh, RF gen level and then turn the control down so we start to reduce the the signal and uh, as you can see it's beginning to uh, to drop off now that's at minus 18 dBm and uh, so that gives us the again an indication of what the power is doing I can change the uh, the range as well on there so we can obviously go right down to uh, minus 30 dBm and uh, we'll see what it does then uh, 
and uh, yeah so it's quite a nice bit of software you know it works quite well so we've done that now minus 30 so we can keep going and uh, it's minus 21 so we can see all the time minus 30 into the floor there which is what we set the low limit to and then I'm adjusting it back up to uh, minus 10 dBm in this particular case so quite a handy little uh, little measurement tool um, so going back into it a moment we've got here um, when I can get the, the camera to focus again um, if it will let's have a look so we've got units, uh, I mean I can get the mouse pointer to it, but we can select DBM as relative mode, DBM, so we can for example select uh, you know watts, milliwatts, so if I select milliwatts, now what happens is, is when you do uh, change a setting here in the software, it doesn't actually change anything until you uh, you then select apply above settings here this green bar there and when you do that then it will when I click on that in a moment it'll uh, then change it right so I've clicked on it now and now it'll change that to milliwatts that does take a little bit of getting used to at first because when you do change a, a parameter here in the software and it doesn't take account of it you think well what's going wrong you know um, but you know most uh, other packages that I've used software packages when you change something here it immediately takes effect you know in the measurement but on this software it doesn't it uses the update feature which appears here there's nothing there at the moment but obviously when you change this uh, you know if I change that back to DBM for example then it says uh, apply above settings and then obviously it'll change it back to DBM um, one of the other nice things about this software as well is that um, you've got the facility here under general settings um, to have an offset uh, DV offset here so obviously if you're using a external attenuator um, coupled on the uh, RF input to measure high power then naturally then you can uh, use it for measuring even high power signals even though it's only designed in itself when using direct signal um, application straight to the end type socket on the on the device you can only measure low level signals with a RF attenuator appropriate level in there you can also measure measure watts as well so again that's a nice feature about that uh, where it says units you can change that to um, watts as well so you know with an RF attenuator um, then we can apply that setting there if we were to say put a 30 dB attenuator in then we would be measuring watts as well so you can do all sorts with it really it's quite a very useful tool it's a nice little uh, piece of kit to have and of course um, you know if you're using this software portable with um, uh, for example a Surface Pro tablet device or uh, an Android device or Microsoft Windows device um, you know you can Get the benefit of having a lot of portability obviously because you can uh, you know make measurements without having to lump big pieces of kit around like that you know test sets so it does away with that um, awful situation of having to make measurements using very heavy lifting um, you know bulky radio test instruments that need to be obviously um, you know lumped in out of vehicles or um, you know used in a trying to get upstairs you know in a building for example to a, a a radio repeater site or whatever you know sometimes difficult to access locations you're lumping 40 kilograms of test gear around with you you know obviously it's, uh, it's a difficult job in all weathers so it's nice to be able to have a little package like that that can go in a little box that you can carry with you and a tablet device and then uh, you can make quick and accurate measurements without having you know the advanced features of a microwave radio test set um, again the software is available for um, different OS's 
um, I found it quite easy to use there are calculators as well uh, that I've downloaded another analytical software which uh, I'm rich to provide which allow you to make other complex measurements and things um, but again it's uh, it's quite a nice um, little unit I think it's um, if we just go down to where is it now looks to be something off the bottom of the screen here I'm not right sure what that is but uh, might be that there's something uh, something there at the bottom as well that I can't quite see that's just coming off the edge there don't appear to be a pull down bar so that might be me having to reduce or increase the resolution of my monitor so that it can then pull out the additional whatever's down there if, if it does appear it probably doesn't it's just the update button there I think that's uh, half disappearing off the screen um, obviously you've got the different modes you've got continuous mode um, you can hold the measurement as well um, you can do that and then obviously um, that's again a little tricky thing there they're quite close together then you have to apply there and now it's held the measurement um, so it's, uh, the software is okay don't get me wrong but I find it a little bit you know it's just a little bit clunky a little bit you know it's I suppose it depends what you're used to um, yeah obviously a lot of the key site um, stuff it takes account and, and road and swartz uh, as well it takes account of these measurements as soon as you change the settings here it applies it whereas here it's you having to do this update thing all the time um, and of course uh, you know it, it can be a little bit laborious that um, so in the tools bit up here as well um, in the settings you can only access that when the uh, when the serial port isn't running for the, the USB driver or the device um, if it's not communicating with the sensor you can then get into settings which you can't when you're in continuous mode so I can't go into settings but in tools I've got uh, different tools here you can zero all sensors you can capture the screen if you want as well that's something that you can do um, so obviously you know it's done that now it's captured the screen so then it can uh, it can store that as well um, so that's a nice little feature especially if you're wanting to use your measurements in customer conformance testing or confidence tests um, you can do that whereas on instruments like the um, Marconi instruments and other radio test sets for example you know you're having to uh, probably use video or print off and a dot matrix printer from the parallel port um, you know the the waveform measurement or the parameters that you're, you're looking at and print them off physically and then perhaps take a photo of that or scan it it's more aggravation uh, also in the tools menu uh, we've got quite a bit of other things we've got so obviously we've seen the capture screen uh, you can log data as well which is quite useful um, you can show multiple sensors uh, there's an offset table as well um, so there we can set up a an offset table so you can obviously put in all the offset data in if you want in to take account and do accurate measurements um, we've also got um, you can update firmware um, do quite a little bit with it really um, down here as well you've got the scale mode uh, which is right down at the bottom of the screen and uh, at the moment it's set to manual because I set up my own parameters here but you can, you can set that to auto as well, automatic and then obviously it will measure the, the noise on the signal it will set that to quite a, you know, obviously a, a close limit so that's quite handy as well so you can measure noise on our signals, phase noise uh, and you can do quite a bit with it um, as you can see there it's put the limits quite close together um, so if I change that back to um, maximum power let's say uh, you know, minus 15 dBm and then back to minus 
minus 30. And it's put us back to, to where we should be. So yeah, it's uh, it's quite a nice little uh, little instrument um, that you can use. I've just turned the RF level down to minus 24.6 dBm, so that's where it's measuring at the moment. Um, as for the uh, modes on the top, um, obviously, you know, we've we've time slot, scope, list, etc. We'll have a look at that next. Uh, we're just in continuous mode at the moment. Um, I don't seem to see how you can switch between the modes because when I click on them in the current mode, it's uh, it's not allowing me to switch between them. It only allows you to do that when you're uh, not when the USB is not connected. Um, but I don't know how to switch between the different modes when it's currently connected to a, a sensor. That's not clear, it's not something that stands out at you. And, uh, you know, and obviously uh, makes itself prevalent. So, again, I don't know, seems strange. We've got general settings. Frequency averages offset. Um, we've got the trigger down there, but yeah, I don't seem to be able to switch between these modes. Continuous is running continuous, which is fine, but I can't seem to switch that off if I do a right mouse click or a left mouse click. So, goodness knows how on earth you switch between that. So, what I shall do, I shall just unplug the uh. We'll see what happens. I'll just unplug this and then see whether it'll allow us to, uh, to switch between the modes but, uh, when it stops communicating. So, and now the, uh, so there's no sensor. And now I can't get into settings either. It does seem a bit, a bit clunky for that reason. I'm not sure why it's like that. I'll have to do some more research and find out whether I can uh, get into these other modes. I don't know how to do that at the moment. I'm just uh, first time I've used this software, so we will be back shortly. Okay, we're back. I uh, found out some further information after reading the uh, the manual uh, under the help section here. Um, I've noticed further down um, as this. Um, under trigger it says here continuous um, and I couldn't get in the last the first part of the video I couldn't get these modes here I can't select these and uh, I wondered what was going off um, even in the uh, tools menu um, under show multiple sensor I can't select other modes in different sensors as well so I read up about it and it turns out that this model of sensor that's connected to this software only works in continuous mode. So that explains why that's always highlighted and I can't highlight any of these because according to what it says in the in the help bit um, there was a um, section in there about the sensor types and only certain models of sensor, the higher end sensors, allow these facilities to be enabled in the software. So if it's a base model sensor like this one is, then you can only measure continuous mode, which is what we're doing now. So that explains why you can't get to that, which is, uh, I feel a bit disappointed in that. <laughs> um, I think that, you know, they've uh, produced a bit of software that, that looks, you know, more advanced than it actually is. Um, unless you've got the, you know, the top of the range sensors, but even they're advanced um features at the bottom that they're greyed out um, and the only thing you can get to is is these bits so they've limited it basically on the um on that aspect where you can't use it um 
you know, all the software features, which would have been nice. Um, but anyway, it's not compatible with this particular type of sensor. Obviously, this software is made to work with lots of different Amritsu sensors that obviously do all kinds of different uh, measurement capabilities. So, yeah, I suppose it's okay. I mean, after all, you can still do your measurements and everything. It's just that the software alludes to the fact that it can do a lot more than it actually can. Which I'm okay with, you know, at the end of the day, it's not a problem, but it's, it's just like, you know, if you're buying a piece of kit, you know, you want it to, to do the thing. And I suppose it, that's the choice that you have to make when you're making a purchase on something like this, is that, you know, is that all you want it to do? I mean, there's a power sweep mode available in the other settings, which are greyed out. So you can't do that. So again, when you come back to an instrument such as the, uh, you know, the microwave test sets um, that we're looking at, the, one of the things that you find with software is uh, quite a lot is you might need to purchase a license in order to unlock certain features of it. Um, that again, the software is written for um, a range of sensors that cover a wide spec and yet the sensor that you have might be a base spec sensor in which case you know some of the features in the software get greyed out and you can't use them so you only allow basic level measurements um, so sometimes it's worth even though it's more um, technically more aggro carrying certain bits of kit around at least if you've got pieces of kit like that you know you're measuring everything you know it's not just down to um, you know what the software will allow you to do the the hardware gives you full capability whereas the software can be quite limited um, I mean I count myself lucky to have been able to download this software from Amritsu and be using this sensor without having to prove um, purchase you know with um, with the sensor and give zero numbers and then get a license from Anritsu um, to use it but again you know I'm, I'm not uh, complaining or anything it's just that they're my observations of what you can expect with some of the software related products so yeah at least you've seen the measurement of it um, you've seen what we've done by using the uh, radio test set there to give an output and obviously read it on the uh, on, on the software there are obviously lots of other settings and things in the software which I would have liked to have shown you but unfortunately the software is locked down where it won't work with that with this particular kind of sensor that I've got plugged in this model number um, which explains why you know certain things are, are greyed out but um, it still works you know you can make measurements and everything and it's uh, still a good um, a, a good thing to use for calibrating signal generators or for uh, measuring low level signals and um, up to 6 gigahertz so it's, it's quite useful obviously can measure pulse signals as well as CW um, so it's useful in so many different applications as well um, so yes um, you know if you get the chance to get hold of something like that then uh, by all means um, you won't be disappointed so um, thanks again for watching uh, if you have any comments please add them below and uh, we'll see you in the next video bye for now